This year we've had the good fortune of having uh, Roger Goodell will come on now for the second time, which I always enjoy. He's the NFL commissioner elected back in 2006, just given a five-year extension, and our commissioner Roger Goodell is joining us. Uh, commissioner, how are you this morning? I'm great, Colin. How are you doing? You know, I'm great. I'm watching a piece of film this morning on um, a young, uh, Tom Brady, and he's talking on his documentary about he, he watches the first Super Bowl he went to, and he said, God, I, I didn't know what I was doing. And I sit and, and I think to myself, well, you were pretty darn good. You won a Super Bowl. If Roger Goodell today could go back to Roger Goodell first year as a commissioner, you've dealt with real things here, social issues, uh, negotiations, uh, owner uh, squabbles. What would today's Roger Goodell tell the first year's commissioner? What have you truly learned? Do you think the biggest gap, the biggest leap for you in learning in your job in all these years? You know, Colin, I think you got to learn to expect the unexpected. And, uh, you know, it's probably having been in the league for almost 25 years prior to that, I thought that I had probably seen most everything, and that clearly was not the case. So, you you know, you can't go into this assuming that your learning uh, is in any way uh, stopped or even slowed down. And we, as you point out, there are a lot of issues we've had to deal with. I think, you know, as the Super Bowl gets bigger and bigger, I think more people want to share in that platform, more people want to share in that opportunity to get news. And uh, we're, you know, we're aware of that. And what we try to do is try the best you can to keep the focus on the field and the game. This is a great matchup. Once again, I think the country will unite around this game and have a you know a wonderful afternoon and evening, and I think it's uh, it'll be great for us. Listen, no business is the, the success is not linear. Even Tom Hanks can have a bad movie. Uh, you, ratings go up and down. You're a very healthy league. The Pro Bowl yesterday was up 28 percent. You have multiple bidders, including us here at Fox on Thursday Night Football. The league is vibrant. There is no question. You've you're you're you're, you're streaming money. Silicon Valley is now interested in being a partner with the NFL, but the rating Ratings were down this year. Um, what's the reason? Do, do you have a feeling? Uh, could I suggest perhaps that you you put the game on too many days? London, Thursday, Saturday, Sunday. Is that legit? Do you have a reason why the numbers are down a little? Well, what, the first thing, Colin, we don't we don't uh, eliminate any thought and any uh, a theory. Uh, we analyze all of them. Uh, we look at them. To your oversaturation point, uh, I don't buy it when uh, our season is 26 weeks. Um, the next lowest number of weeks is 36. Mm -hmm. uh, we play on three nights and, and days of a week. And as you point out, uh, I don't think against the other leagues you could probably find a day of the week where the, one of those games aren't on. So... Um, I don't, I don't necessarily buy the oversaturation, but we, you know, whenever you're adding, as we do the last couple of weeks of the season, which we've done for decades, we've had Saturday games once college football is over, you're always going to see a ratings decrease there. That's not unusual for us. And uh, we want to strengthen, obviously, you know, the Sunday afternoon packages, the Sunday night packages, the Monday night package, and our new Thursday night package. And that's that's the trick. But I, I'm not buying that it's necessarily oversaturation, but it can be a contributing factor. And we've got to do everything to, to focus in on that and, and analyze it. Um, did you ever think it was unfair? The NBA is known as a players league, yet would not allow their players to kneel. You are seen as friendly to the owners in the system, not as friendly, perhaps, as the media suggests to the players and yet you gave them freedom to have a social activism. Was there ever a moment six, eight, 12 weeks ago when you felt to yourself, it's interesting how we're being labeled because we're actually allowing players to do things that the player friendly NBA is not. Well, Colin, I'd add to that first. I don't, I don't think like that because it doesn't pay me to do that. Uh, you know, people characterize us, but I, I think what our focus is on is just developing that relationship and continuing to listen to our players. And our history is that the players, particularly for me as commissioner, have been instrumental in us making real changes in what we do. Now, you mentioned, um, you know, the the changes that we made. My cause, my cleats would be one that I'd put in there that was that was driven by players, particularly Brandon Marshall, who started that for me. And then it evolved into a place that allows the players to express themselves. Yeah. You saw what happened this season with the social issues, which, you know, we had unprecedented dialogue between our, our owners and our players and this office of the league. 
and it uh, it's led to a better understanding and and I think uh, something that's going to help us improve our communities. And then I'd add a third one to that. It would just be celebrations. You know, the celebrations were something that came out of over 100 phone calls between either myself or Troy Vincent, our head of football operations, uh, between us and the players to understand how we should change it, what we should change. And, you know, we're, we're, we always put the player input into our decision making and it's actually been very beneficial to us. Uh, I the first uh, sporting event I ever watched was the 1972 Super Bowl that was Washington and George Allen. Uh, the late great football coach. Uh, Remember it well. Yes, it was, uh, and, and it was Garrow Premium making the. Yep. Uh, <laughs> I think it was fourteen to seven. The Dolphins <laughs> won. Bob Greasy, Warfield, Zonka. I mean, I can. I, I'm dating myself. I watched it on a black and white TV in the coast of Washington, um, and it's the first first sporting event I watched. And um, but something has happened to football, and I am a football guy first. Uh, I've I've always said that. In the last couple of years, as a consumer. I am often confused with what a catch is and what a catch is not. Now, I love football and I know the rules. And most of the time, um, I understand football. But about five or six years ago, it started with a Calvin Johnson catch back of the end zone, Detroit, Chicago. He caught the ball two feet down. He pressed the ball on the ground and they disallowed it. And from that moment on, I now feel that after great catches, I have to wait and watch a replay. Are you not somewhat concerned that a consumer like myself who loves the game and feels that he knows it is often left confused on what a catch is and what it isn't in the NFL today? Colin, I agree with you 100 percent. I'd even go further. I'm not I'm not just somewhat concerned. I am concerned. Uh, We just had uh, five Hall of Fame receivers and several coaches come in uh, just two weeks ago to focus on the catch, no catch rule. Uh, how we bring clarity. And this is where the balance comes in, Colin. We've had other examples of this over the years where you want you want there to be clarity from an officiating standpoint, a coaching and a player standpoint. They know what it is, what it isn't. Um, and so they, they draft the rule, the competition committee looks at it, they bring it to the membership, and they want that clarity. I think here you might have clarity in a large element of it, but then what happens is it's not the rule that people really want. Right. And one of our Hall of Fame receivers said it well to me uh, when we looked at this a couple of years ago. Fans want catches. And Thank so you. Yes. We, and, and I think what you know we've got to try to do, and we had a really good discussion for over three hours and looking at a lot of tape, and we've got some ideas of how to bring uh, some clarity to that. It's particularly in the going to the ground that I think – has created a lot of the confusion because it's a different rule when you're going to the ground than when you're on the sideline or in the end zone. And I think that's what we're focusing on. And the competition committee is going to be bringing this up in February and in March. And I hope we'll be able to address this in a way that will bring more clarity and frankly, more excitement to this. Roger Goodell, NFL commissioner, joining us on the herd. Um, I live in the West Coast now. I used to live in Connecticut at another place. And when I moved out to the West, uh, the Niners, uh, the Chargers, uh, um, now we have a team in Los Angeles, the Rams and the Chargers. Are you concerned? I know that ideally, Commissioner, you don't want teams to ever leave, but that that's, that's, that's idealism. We know that there are ownership changes and stadium issues. Do you look back now, is it possible that you move too many teams too quickly out west? Is that possible? Because it feels like to me the Chargers don't have much footing in Los Angeles right now. Well, I don't know if I would agree, Colin. Of listen, you know the the process of relocation uh, took you know ten, fifteen years in each of those cases, uh, trying to resolve stadium issues. Uh, there were just lengthy efforts to try to get those done, and yes, they did come in a shorter period of time, in part because the three teams were seeking the Los Angeles opportunity, uh, and so yes, we had. Uh, three relocations essentially in a essentially a year and a half basis. And that happened in the nineties also, uh, unfortunately. Uh, but you know, you never want to see that as you point out. Uh, I think you obviously go through a transition when that happens because you're playing, we have two teams playing in temporary facilities right, right. now. And 
that's you actually could argue three. Yeah. Uh, and so, you know, that's uh, that's something that does impact you. It impacts on our fan relationship because, listen, you know, that's an important bond between the fans and the team, and you you really hasn't ever do that. Yes. And it wasn't after you know a, a more than decades of all out efforts to try to get that resolved. We couldn't get that done. But so we are. But I think the I think those teams. Uh, both the Rams and the uh, Chargers are going to be incredibly successful in Los Angeles. I think we see that it's going to take some time because they haven't had a franchise there in over 20 years. And that's part of the effort of marketing yourself and and having that available. But we saw the reaction. I was there for the playoff game with the Rams uh, on the wild card weekend, and it was fantastic atmosphere. And that was in a temporary facility when we were, you know, earlier that day, went over to see the new facility. You're not going to believe it, Colin. It's spectacular. Oh, I know. It's going to set I, I, a new standard, and that mm-hmm. that's going to bring excitement when that stadium hits and the two teams are playing there. No, it's less than 15 minutes from my house, Commissioner Roger Goodell. A um, couple of things here. Uh, the NBA has been almost hyper-progressive on the uh, opportunities of gambling moving forward. Um, you are now uh, in, in the league is embracing a team moving to Las Vegas. Uh, the cynic in me says it's great for money. Uh, I think the Vegas situation, stadium-wise, is much better than the Oakland situation. And I would not deny that Adam Silver's league will have another emotional attachment if you can bet on games and the league is for it. But are you truly comfortable with gambling in the NFL if there is a relationship? Where do you stand on the comfort level of that? Well, Colin, we've been unequivocal in the in the point of uh, that the integrity of our game is the most important issue. And we want to make sure that our fans know that what they're seeing play out in front of them, whether they're in the stadium or watching on a device or watching at home on a television set, is that that is not influenced by anything. And so that is our number one issue is to make sure we maintain that integrity of the game. Uh, Whatever changes occur, and we all know there's an evolution of what's going on in gambling, I think, uh, throughout the world, but clearly here in the States. Yeah. The Supreme Court is now going to be hearing this issue. So we have to be prepared for any outcome. I don't think anyone would have imagined 10 years ago we would have had a franchise in Las Vegas, and that's going to require us to think about some of our policies and uh, differently. But we recognize this issue, but that's the that's the bar that we're making sure that we don't in any way hinder, which is the integrity of our game. By the way, I see Vince McMahon wants to, uh, in wrestling lexicon, wants to do the old turnbuckle treatment to the NFL. He wants to go up against you and have a new league. The XFL didn't work well the first time. Uh, What was your initial response when you saw that story? Uh, I I didn't really see much of the story, to be honest with you, uh, Colin. I saw that they announced it last week. Um, You know, I've heard uh, that they were thinking about doing something. And, you know, let's see how things play out. I mean, it's uh, I think it's still a couple of years before they get there. Obviously, you know, we've had uh, many uh, spring leagues, uh, competing leagues that have propped up over decades. Uh, You know, from our standpoint, we focus on doing what we do best and making sure we improve our game. And that's where our focus is. Yeah. Well, Vince is an interesting character. I will say this, as much as people lamented the XFL, uh, Commissioner, I they brought in some camera views that you guys use today. I absolutely love the, your new camera behind the quarterback so I can watch how a play develops. I, I would give the XFL a tip of the cap on that. That is my favorite new thing in the NFL, that technology. And for some reason, you guys have always been willing to embrace new stuff. Maybe other sports, not as much. So uh, we can all kind of mock Vince McMahon. But that new camera angle, by the way, in your league offices, did you was it negative or positive? I think it was positive. Listen, you know, Colin, to your point, one of the things we've, I think, been known for and we take great pride in is innovation. And innovation, whether it's, in the rules, whether it's in uh, how we present our games. We spend an awful lot of time on game presentation to try to take out uh, downtime in our games, and we had tremendous success in that, Uh, but we think we can do a lot better. And so we continue to do that. On the presentation of the game, it's one of the reasons why uh, we rely so much on our broadcast partners and that yeah. you know they, they bring that innovation. They're spectacular at it. They are the best of the best. And when they have ideas, they bring them to us. And, and frankly, most of the time, we love it. Yeah. And, you know, I'm not saying we, we buy into every one of their innovations, but, you know, that type of thing where you're getting a new camera angle 
we wanted to see what the reaction of the fans was, and that that was very positive. Uh, I, I, I'm watching some of the Nick Foles stuff. You just didn't get to see a game like this year. I can literally see what Nick Foles is trying to read downfield. It's, yeah. <laughs> it's incredible. It's, no, it's, but it's, you know, to your point, it's, it's that innovation. It's giving a perspective to the fan that they didn't have before, and that's what we drive ourselves on. What is it that the fan wants? that we are delivering on and figuring out how to do that. And that, that innovation can come from other sports, other leagues, uh, from our partners. We, we, don't, we don't walk around here saying it's got to come from us. We'll take it from anywhere it comes. Commissioner, I appreciate you coming on for 15 minutes. I know you're a busy guy, and thank you so much. Glad to talk to you, Colin. Have a great week. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Also, be sure to check out more of the best clips from The Herd or go watch a few segments from our other shows on FS1.